storyteller coming up who needs the music stand, so I'm gonna get that while I talk to you. Okay, he has written eight screenplays, a documentary, numerous stage plays. He is writing a Broadway musical right now called Quadroon. What? That's a lot of writing. He's had stuff produced on both coasts and right now in Bogota, Colombia, something. Bogota, Colombia, something is going on. This is Let's welcome to the stage the man who tells stories, Mr. Mark Mantell. Catherine Hepburn, Gene Kelly, Rita Hayworth, Joan Fontaine, movie stars. You know, I don't think I had any real personality when I was a little boy. I mean, what would have been the point? I mean, tenement life could be really tough on a five-year-old in Brooklyn, especially one who had a sense of responsibility. My true home was in connection to my family. I mean, if I wasn't around, who was going to go to the movies with my grandma Lottie or go to the theater with my grandpa Max? So if I couldn't figure out why Lottie and Max wouldn't go to the movies and the theater together, then it was up to me to make sure that one or the other didn't have to be alone on these artistic journeys. I mean, they needed me for comfort and security. And this was an important position to uphold. So once again, I'm with my grandmother. And we're waiting for my grandfather at the 57th Street Horn and Harder Automat. You see, he's a uh, shoe salesman at Bergdorf Goodman's, and he's always late. And we're waiting because my grandmother has a meeting to go to, political. If there is a cause, Lottie is fighting for it. She stood up against anti-Semitism and McCarthyism, and she offered support for various charities. And Lottie worried about and took care of friends and strangers, and she took care of me, and she took care of Max, and she didn't take care of herself, and she was alone. My grandmother was blonde and pretty, and sometimes she looked like Ginger Rogers, and she was soft-spoken, and uh, she may have been surrounded by people who cared for her, but still, she was alone until she found someone to save her. Mr. Jesus Christ. <laughs> now, Max didn't care that Lottie was attending a Holy Roller Church somewhere up in ha Harlem. No, he was not thrilled that she would take me to such an event, and not because we were Jewish. No, no, it's because he worried about the dangers in getting to the place. <laughs> you have to take the subway to the 42nd Street line, the BMT, and then you have to change to the IRT station, and that train has crazy people on it and juvenile delinquents. West Side Story. <laughs> no arguments. End of discussion between the grandparents. I would never get to be baptized. Max would forget he had this conversation with Lottie, and Lottie would still have to travel alone on the subway. But I did hope that Jesus would keep her company along the trip, especially on the IRT line. Now, my social life was in taken up entirely by my grandmother and every movie that we could sneak into. And in the evenings, I had a full schedule because I had, a f I had to pencil in time to accommodate my grandfather. You see, Max was my buddy. And he always dressed in a suit and tie like an English gentleman. And he had a raincoat and an umbrella. He looked like Fred Astaire. And famous movie star ladies, well, they were always giving him theater tickets. Of course, he only lasted half an act. He either fell asleep, and as soon as the lights went up for the intermission, he would bolt right out of the audience and leave me alone in the theater. And if, every, any, and if anyone should ever ask me if I was ever frightened of being alone, on my own, in a terrifyingly big city, my answer would be, Seriously? Are you kidding? It's 11 o'clock in the theater district. Nobody notices me. No one gives a flying fuck about me. I couldn't get lost or arrested with this crowd if I tried. <laughs> so, nothing bad ever happened. Max would realize on the subway in Brooklyn, oh my God, I left my grandson in the theater, and he'd rush back and 
everything was fine. Oh yes, many times I had much to contemplate while waiting for my grandfather at the automat. Like if someone would have said, little boy, why are you waiting all alone? Don't you have any friends or toys? My answer would be simple and direct. No, I don't have time to fit them into my schedule. It's Thursday night. I have a ticket to see Death of a Salesman. <laughs> and always there'd be a really good excuse when Max would show up looking dapper as usual. He might apologize for being late because Catherine Hepburn had stopped in looking for a sensible pair of walking shoes or dear Joan Fontaine was seeking his advice. My grandmother and I were in agreement that his heart was in a good place even when he would temporarily forget who he was, where he was, and where he'd left his grandson. Now, this lack of judgment must have been due to the wear and tear of having to endure to catering to the likes of Miss Hepburn and Miss Fontaine. And I may have been a small child, but I knew my grandfather was in serious need of a, a nap. So Max abandoning me in various public places was always a non-issue. I mean, he was my friend. And the fact is, he always came back to rescue me from absolutely no disaster. And I usually scored a 42nd Street donut. And let me tell you, those donuts were really good. Now, once inside the subway on our trip home, Max would thoroughly analyze the critique and the evening that we had semi-shared together. So I figured the best thing to do was to nod in agreement, listen, and mull over everything he was saying, even though I didn't know what the hell he was going on half the time. Which was okay, because at the last station stop in Brooklyn, he would buy me an ice cream cone. So you see, all was right with the world. <laughs> but there is one time that my grandparents are, are truly together. And I know that something is terribly wrong. And it's not something that can be fixed, especially by me. I'm all of three or four at the most. And I, 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 I'm not in the right state of mind and I'm in a small bathtub and it's filled with ice and water. And I think it's Max who's trying to hold me up, but I keep slipping away. And Lottie, she catches me and she places cold compresses on my head and she's kissing me and Max is trying to hold me tighter and I smell rubbing alcohol and it burns my eyes. But suddenly I can see clear that my grandfather has tears coursing down his cheek. And my grandmother is kissing me and holding me. And though I may actually be in great physical pain, it doesn't hurt half as much as seeing the people that I love. So scared and unhappy. And this will continue on for several hours because I keep melting the ice. And now in the present, I realize, looking back and viewing, Lottie and Max and the moments they tried to save me and the way they separately reacted. My grandmother with anguish and despair, Max with fear and helplessness that they could possibly lose their grandchild to have to repeat the suffering they must have gone through together when they lost their own child. Lottie and Max were both 20 years old when they met when they entered a dance contest. And a couple of weeks later, they eloped. And a couple of years later, they remained together, but they lived apart. The tragedy, in terms of what it must have done to them as a couple, a pain so great in the loss that would be mirrored in each other's eyes every moment that they physically remained together. Oh, I don't think that they separated. They simply never stopped loving one another. They just couldn't live together because they were lost, and they could not find their way home. At the age of 48, my grandmother left this plane of existence. You see, she had an appointment to meet with Jesus. And one rainy day, several weeks later, my grandfather left work, took his raincoat, his umbrella, temporarily forgot about me, and walked away forever. You see, he he needed to be with his wife. Now, sometimes <laughs> in the present, I take my grandparents to the movies and to the theater with me. Oh, 
Lottie, love Gene Kelly and Rita Hayworth. For Max, it was Catherine Hepburn and Miss Joan Fontaine. I wonder what Lottie would think knowing that Gene Kelly would pick me out, asked to meet me in order to give me a thumbs up and say, hey kid, you've got it. The night I danced in a tribute in Hollywood for Rita Hayworth. And Rita Hayworth would read a screenplay that I wrote entitled Intimate Strangers. And she would take it to producers because she wanted to film it. She wanted to play the role of Lottie. Oh, and Max, <laughs> would you believe that Katherine Hepburn would read one of my plays, send it to various Broadway producers, and she would save all the correspondence with regard to me, along with these papers that are now archived with the New York, New York Theater Library. And one more thing, Max, are you really going to get a kick out of this? One day in my past, I signed a contract to act on stage opposite a certain Miss Joan Fontaine, who from that day forward would become my dearest and closest family. So that's why I take my grandparents to the theater and to the movies and sometime to special events. And it's why I've saved two seats in the back row, just in case they decided to join us tonight. Welcome home. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe for more videos. And we'd love to hear about your family experiences that have changed your life. Be sure to click the link to go to our Facebook page or comment on your stories below. Till next time, guys. Thank you.